soon, sir. I'll be with you in a moment. As you know, we'll be docking in Miami tomorrow. Now, you can either spend the day on the beach or join me on a tour of the romantic and colorful Everglades. Now, will those of you who wish to accompany me on the tour, please raise your hands. What is it, Nuji? Can't you see I'm busy lining up a tour of the Everglades? Uh, thank goodness I'm in time. Now, I'll be right back. Will you please explain what this is all about? War has been declared. Look, war. Seminole Indians at war. And war with who? With us. Read it. Chief Tom Lightfoot of the Seminole Indians declared last night that since his tribe has never signed a peace treaty with the United States, a state of war still exists between the two nations. Uh, see? If we all go to the Everglades tomorrow, we'll be scalped. <laughs> At the price of haircuts today, it would be worth it. Uh, Susanna, when an Indian says, give me some skin, he doesn't mean, let's shake hands. All right. I promise we'll take every precaution. May I offer the first one? Certainly. Call the trip off. There are Indians way back in that swamp who still think they're Indians. You know that. I wonder what I ought to wear. I've never been scalped before. Oh, no, son. No, this time you've gone too far. Declaring war, really. On the contrary, Dad. We've hit every newspaper from coast to coast. Yes, I have no doubt of it. Now, you call those papers and retract that statement at once. Dad, listen to me. Almost every cent you've made here at the trading post has been spent on me. Well, it costs money to go to Princeton. Too much. Especially the way the tourist trade has fallen off. Now, supposing the government believes all this, they may declare war on us. I hope they do. Y you hope they do? Certainly. It's a sense we'll be defeated. And you know what's happened to every country Uncle Sam was defeated. Go on. They get millions of dollars to put them back on their feet. In the meantime, <laughs> enough tourists ought to be intrigued by this to risk their lives on the trading post. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I'm going over to the country club. I got old Peterson set up at a dollar a hole. You yeah. haven't heard all of the idea. Who else have you declared war on? This morning, I got a call from the Ocean Queen to guide a group of their passengers through the swamps. Oh, it should be a perfect job for a Princeton graduate. Well, I thought I'd give them an extra thrill. I'll have Hank and Chuck dress as Indians and capture us. And we arrive at the trading post, I'll let the tourists in on the gag, okay? You really think that'll make business pick up? Dad, it can't miss. But to do it right, you've got to dress up, too. Full regalia. Oh, no. Including the fancy headdresses and feathers from Arizona. No, sir, absolutely not. All those fancy Indian clothes go back where they belong in mothballs. Dad, you've got to put them on. An Indian, Indian chief. Oh, I suppose so. What else have you dreamed up? You can't talk like that. Talk like... Oh, no. No, no, that's too much. Oh, no, I won't do that. No, no. Dad, it's what they expect. Now, come on, let's rehearse it once. Come on. Uh. You've lost your accent. Come on, try it again. Uh. You think him better? Him heap better. How? Well, I guess we're all here. Mr. and Mrs. Poole, have any of you seen... Here I am! Must we take your portable television set along, Snookums? Well, I'm certainly not going to miss my favorite television program, Mary Smith, housewife. Yesterday, she learned that her brother was in a serious automobile accident, that her sister's husband has got to have an operation, and that one of her children broke his leg when he fell out of the swing. Uh, I love all those comedy programs, too. <laughs> well, can we be off? <laughs> I'm sure that's where I'm going. Now, I, sorry, I kept you all waiting. You look like an accident waiting to happen. It might. Have you read the papers today? They're burning the midnight oil in the Pentagon. I just made out my last will. Excuse and us I'm for leaving a minute. everything. Uh, hey, come here. You're going to have the others in a panic. Get rid of this stuff, especially the helmet. Susanna. I know I've got a hole in my head to even go with you, but I don't want another one made by an Indian arrow. But what if they get you in the chest? Oh, no. And here's 
a medical kit with everything we'll need, even to a large white handkerchief. For a tourniquet? Uh, no, so we can surrender gracefully. <laughs> New gee, this trip is, is less dangerous than a ride on a California freeway. Indians don't even use war paint anymore. No? Pomeroy Squaw? Uh, me, Pomeroy Squaw. And me, Nuji Squaw. Me, Whistling Wolf. Me, Guide Pale Faces through Everglades. I don't like to flatter you, but you talk very well for a foreigner. <laughs> I'll get our party together. Oh, and uh, keep up the act. They'll get a big kick out of it. quiet. Oh, speak English. Me speak English. <laughs> Rooster crow. Him sound like signal. Maybe one of his hens laid an egg. No. Only egg in swamp, alligator egg. Maybe one of the alligators laid an egg. <laughs> Why are we stopping here? Oh, just for a rest, Mrs. Poole. Oh, well, my husband's been getting some wonderful pictures, uh, but he wonders if there isn't something more exciting to photograph. After all, this is... Indian country, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what parts are they playing? Friendly or unfriendly Indians? They part of tribe, but bad. Handsome, aren't they? Dear, start shooting. <laughs> Do you think they'll mind if I pose them? No go near. Tell your brave shoot magic box from here. What are we going to do? You stay. Me talk with him. You wouldn't listen to me, would you? General Custer. <laughs> what happened to you? You were supposed to capture us an hour ago. We lost our way. We kept going round and round in circles. My feet are killing me. Who can go hiking in moccasins? Yeah, can't we get this over with? I can't stand this paint. Besides, I got some in my eye. The trading post is less than a half a mile from here. Can you find it without getting lost? Anything a Princeton man can do, a Yale man can do better. I still think I learned more at business school. Okay, okay, you know the bit. I get moving. How out with strangers? No pale face get hurt if go trading post. Chief will decide. Uh, decide what? New type ransom. You buy enough, Chief let you go. Well, uh, I'm not sure we want to go to the trading post. Let's go back to the ship, huh, folks? Oh. You can do what you want, General, but I'm going to the training post. <laughs> Wait for me. How? How? Chief Lightfoot? Me find pale face in Seminole land. Bad medicine. Ma, mm. keep bad. Who talk for pale face? She'll talk. She talk. And I, uh, I like your hat, Chief. It's very becoming. Why you come where no belong? Well, you see, it was like this. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm allergic to mothballs. Me sorry, too. No got see the closet. Why you come? She wouldn't listen to me. And to think I wind up top woman on a tote pole. No quiet, Nuji. Oh, mighty chief. Fleeter than the elk, wilier than the fox, braver than the bear, I keener than the eagle, mind wiser than the owl. Me ask why you come. You make commercial. Commercial? Now I know this is all an act. You should have rehearsed him longer. Pale folks by, me let you go. Chief Lightfoot has spoken. Me think Chief Lightfoot's a phony. A phony? Look at these war clubs. I'll have you know, madam, I shot an 81 with those war clubs this morning. Dad! Dad! Dad. I'm sorry, son, I told you it wouldn't work. 
I do hope you'll forgive me. I had the idea of declaring war to bring us some badly needed publicity. Maybe bring some business to our trading post. I'm sorry. I'll guide you back to the ship if you're ready to go. Before we buy some souvenirs, we wouldn't have missed this for the world. Well, I should say not. <laughs> Dear, look at that lovely little TP over there. Come on, I want to take it home to Johnny. <laughs> oh, how much are these moccasins? Five dollars a pair. Excuse me. How many of you were in on this? Just my father and me and my two pals in the Ivy League. Why? Well, you'd better tell them a truce has been declared. It's Chief Chattahoochee. Oh, you can stop acting now. Who's acting? Chief Chattahoochee is at war. He's not only at war with us, but with everybody. He still thinks he's living in the old days. Many prisoners. Tonight, we use covered wagons to ambush cavalry from Washington. He's been seeing too many movies. I must say, you put on a good show. Are you sure there's no way to escape? It depends on how far you can run with an arrow in your back. I wonder where old Chief Chattahoochee is. Making bad medicine with his medicine man. Ah, uh, this is all my fault. I should never have allowed you to talk me into it. Princeton. <laughs> Can't you make the old chief listen to reason? No, he hates everyone. He even banished his own son, luckily for the son. I can understand that. No, I meant it differently. The sun went to Oklahoma and struck oil. Well, Chief Catahoosets must have some weakness. Everybody has an Achilles heel. Well, he's full of superstitions, like the full moon up there. He thinks it's a good omen. To hold us prisoners? Full moon mean many prisoners. You know, we're a great people for blaming everything on the heavenly bodies. What if I convince him it's a bad omen? You haven't got a chance. As long as this medicine man is around, the guy acts like he went to Johns Hopkins. Well, do something, or I'm going to miss my favorite television programs. Is there any place I could plug it in? A trading post. Have you got some extension cords? A few? Why? Bring it out here and plug it in so I can turn it on. Right here? Right here. Alfred, did you hear that? How proud is Chief Chattahoosets? Very proud. Then he'd accept a challenge, wouldn't he? Susanna, you're not going to fight him. Sure. Loaded tomahawks at 20 paces. <laughs> Suppose I claimed I could make stronger medicine than his medicine man. Would he accept the challenge? Mm, yes, unless he thought it was a trick. Would I resort to tricks at a time like this? I sure hope so. What does Chief Chattahoochee know about modern inventions? Nothing. He hasn't left Guam since he was born. You know, his part of the tribe does everything in the same old primitive way their ancestors did. That's all I need to know. I think I have a prescription his medicine man can't fill. Wish me luck. If you need any help, send up some smoke signals. <laughs> No try trick. Tomahawk make deep dent in skull. Uh, me, me want see Chief Chattahoochee. M me got fresh tobacco for pipe of peace. Me take. Come. Quite a girl, your Miss Pomeroy. Yes, she is. That is, if you prefer youth to experience. <laughs> what you think, medicine man? Chattahoochee, very wise chief. Can do no wrong. Squaw want powwow. Chattahoochee no powwow a squaw. Powwow over. Why? You afraid squaw? Ha, huh, that's what you are. You afraid squaw. Chattahoochee no afraid. What squaw want? I won't prove I better medicine man than him. Why, him best medicine man in all 13 states. What you know, medicine man? You know how make oil from spider leg in this hail? No. How make rain? When it's cloudy. Anybody make rain when cloudy. Me make rain when sunshine. You know how speak to spirits? 
Now you're in my territory. I can talk to the biggest spirit of all. What spirit? The spirit of tree, spirit of sun, moon, water? The spirit of TV. You speak spirit TV? Never hear of TV. Ah. Twenty generations, medicine man, no hear spirit of TV. <laughs> Who's spirit TV? What he do? He make picture come from nowhere. I show you better spirit, spirit of fire. Chief, you say you're not afraid. All right, I won't prove my spirit better than medicine man's spirit. What you say? Me do. If, if my spirit better, you let pale faces go. Chattahoochee, give word. You make ready, you make ready. How? And how. <laughs> we go. It's all hooked up. If this works, I'll buy every product of every sponsor. Here they come. <laughs> you make medicine. Yeah. He couldn't get three days at the palace with that dance. He's just warming up. <laughs> Oh, say he's warming up. <laughs> That's one way to get heartburn. Fingers crossed, I'm on next. Shy Vulture, you greatest medicine man. How you like to have own swamp? Me always want to have own swamp. You have now. We give you Okaluka swamp. Mm. He win. We go. Just a darn minute. What do you mean, he win? Me not even go on yet. You know how he'd fire like him? Of course not. Too bad. Contest over. Me know what matter with you. You like all men. You afraid of squaw. You say me afraid again. You afraid again. Me say no! <laughs> you make foolish squaw medicine. Me laugh at your spirit. What you call it? The spirit of TV. If you no know make picture come from no place, you all pay with lives. great spirit of TV, let my voice be heard on every network and on every channel. Hear me, O oh ruler of the airways and emperor of reruns and residuals. <laughs> Bring before us a program, live or filmed, soap opera or drama, adventure or situation comedy. Grant us this favor, O oh great spirit of TV. hunting ground. Me not want see Indian runway. Me want see soldier runway make different picture. Uh, I don't know if I can. Make! Great. 
We can only get one channel. No, 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 make magic box stop. <laughs> Shy vulture make picture show Indian win, soldiers lose. Me, no, no, how make magic box talk? Hey, come on, give it a try. Shy vulture cannot do what chief ask. No can do. Then must say the pale face squaw, best medicine man. Thank you, Chief Chatter. Who chief? Me take back swamp. Not good for chief to be Indian giver. You big medicine. You make magic box show Indian win. I, I wish I could, but I, I can't right now. M maybe on the Late Late Show. You do now. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> now you'd be glad I got a name in psychology. Oh, Miss Pomeroy, I think I've got a solution. Chief Chattahoochee likes see Indian win, soldier lose. Ugh. Many sleeps ago, I go to Paleface School, make friend. Friend do pictures for magic box. How chief like be in pictures? Me see me in magic box. You be biggest chief of all. When you fight, soldiers run. Ha. Even if it's John Wayne? Even. How chief like idea? We like. Good. You go Hollywood, make much wampum. Be like wampum. Or Hollywood. Not far. We take Iron Bird. May not know Iron Bird. Must be big medicine. Oh, big four motor medicine. And now you let pale faces go? You free. Willy Win War! Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Misleading such a sweet old man. No, I meant it. The next roommate of mine is a big wheel at the networks. I might even ace myself in. Isn't it work? Like a dream. Ah, oh, there's nothing like a college education. And we're free to go? And we won't be burned at the stake or scalped? That's right. Do you know something? I wasn't scared the whole time, not the teeniest bit. <laughs> oh, Better get up on deck. We'll be sailing soon. I don't think this is going to be a very good trip. Why not? I checked the passenger list, and there are three times more women than men. Come in. Oh, why, Mr. and Mrs. Poole, what a surprise. We read that the Ocean Queen was here, so we thought we'd pay you a visit. Well. We're on our way to the Mohawk Valley. I'm shooting another Indian picture. I'm an expert since our adventures with the Seminoles. Uh, did you sell the pictures you shot? Oh, yes, especially the ones of the medicine man eating the fire. <laughs> oh, dear, what time is it? 11.28. Oh, what a pity. It's almost over. It was almost over. Uh, dear, plug in the set. Of course, that's right. You wouldn't know about it, would you? You've been on a round-the-world cruise. And uh, now what, Mrs. Poole? Well, uh, Tom Lightfoot Jr. sold that television show with Chief Chattahoochee. <laughs> it's called King of the Seminoles. <laughs> See? Stories all true, <laughs> taken from files of Seminole Indians. <laughs> Only name changed to protect innocent. <laughs>